So a person is obligated to inebriate oneself on Purim until he knows not the difference between Ar Haman and Baruch Mordechai. Seemingly, the simple shot is, is that you're so out of it, you're completely lost until you can't tell the difference between Haman and Mordechai. Um, the ne- Gemara, right immediately afterwards, tells us a story. It says, Rabba the Rebbe Zeira Abdu Sudas Purim Bahadi Hadadi. They made a Purim Suda together with each other. And Ibso. And they became intoxicated. Come Rabba Shachte Le Rebbe Zeira. Rabba came and he shechted Rebbe Zeira. He slaughtered him. He slaughtered him. It means the, the guy was dead. <coughs> That's pre- what is it? That's extreme. That is extreme. Yes, I would say that's an extreme form. Um, talk about a hangover. Lamachar boy rachame va'achye. The next day, he prayed for mercy, and he was able to resurrect him. So a nace happened. I saw it brought down in his safe. I don't remember which one it was at this point, but it says that come um, rabba. Not shachte, but sachte. He squeezed them, <laughs> and uh, with a, a, shi, a sin, not a not a shin. And therefore, he gave him back his life. He sort of breathed back life into him after sort of um, squashing him. But in any event, the pashtup shot is is that he shechted him. L'shana Amar Lei Nesimar Venavid Sudas Purim Bahadi Hadade. The next year. One said to the other, come, let's make a Purim Suda with each other. <laughs> Amar lay, so he said, no thanks. Lo b'chol shaita v'shaita nisra Miracles don't happen every day. <laughs> so, it doesn't say he said no. It doesn't say which one said it. Correct. It doesn't say which one said what. It could be the other guy who was felt that he didn't know what was going on. He just remembers waking up and... Maybe uh, he, there was blood on the floor. Who knows what there was? But the fellow who performed the shechita may have said lo bi, lo bi shaita the shaita. We don't know which one said it. That's correct. It's a good point. Okay. And Rashi learns quite literally leivsume means lihistaker to become shikar, and that's why he re- translates the ipsum in the story as nishtakru. They became shikor. The Rambam, in his understanding of this mitzvah which is really not one of the mitzvahs hayom. We know that there are only four mitzvahs hayom of Purim. The four mitzvahs hayom of Purim are Kriya Samagillah, are um, Mishloach Manos, um, Matanos Levyonim, and Sudas and Suda, right? So this is sort of a part and parcel of the mitzvah of Suda. And Chazal say when you're having the Suda, it's preferred, or it's a mitzvah, or Michayev, actually the language of the Gemara is, you're obligated to become shikor. Let's take a look at how the Rambam learns the halacha. Ketzad choiva su'uda zu. What is the nature of the obligation of su'das purim? Sheyochal basar, you should eat meat, which is actually one of the requirements of su'das purim. You should not have a, a milchik meal. V'yatakin su'da noek, ifi asher timsayado. Make it as nice as you can afford. V'shoh siyayin ad sheyishtaker, and drink wine until you become shikor, v'yeradeim b'shichrus, and then, or v'yerdam, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, and then you should fall asleep in your, in your, in your drunken stupor. Um, that's, in other words, the, why the Rambam has to add those words <coughs> is because it seems like the Rambam understands, as we'll see in the Maharil shortly, that adilo yada, until you know not the difference, is that you actually fall asleep. What about Maris? Oh, so we'll have to see. What are you going to do about Meirav? So maybe he davened Meirav already. So we're going to see some of the posts can discuss the issues of uh, how you're going to do mitzvahs when you're shikor. Okay, so let's take a look at the Baal Hamor, who's also a Rishon, Rishon, an early Rishon. And he says, Omar Rabba Chayi Vinish Lebesumi Bipur Yakasaf Arav Ephraim Zal Mehahu Uvda Dekam Rabba Shachtila Reb Zeira Lishana he says, from the very story that the Gemara relates immediately after the words, Michai Vinish Lebesume, that story tells us that the halacha is rejected by the Gemara. In other words, what is the story? This, it's a Maisali story. The story is basically saying that look at the michshol, look at the terrible calamity that ensued as a result of two great rabbis 
trying to fulfill this directive of Michai Vinish Lubisume. And the fact that they declined having the pseudo with each other is in the following year is an indication that we don't go according to this halacha. That's the purpose of the story coming right after of Michai Vinish Lubisume. And therefore, Idchi Le Memer de Rabba, the Das Hilchasa Kavose, the Lav Shapir Dami Le Mevat Hachi. And the Balamor therefore says, we don't paskin like that statement of Rabba of Michai Vinish Lubisume, and it's not a proper practice. Some of the Meforshim understand that the, this is totally in a machlokis in Girsa. Notice that the Baal Hamor's Girsa was Rabbah, and the Girsa of our Gemara is Rava. Now, who did the story of the Shechita happen with? Rava and Rebbe Zer. Now, Rava was the Rebbe of Rava, and it's very often that the Gemara, they have Chilufe Girsa, whether it's Rava or Rava. If the Girsa is Rava, of, who says, Michai Vinish Lubisume, then the Gemara story is actually demonstrating that Rabba later retracted from his original Psak. And his experience showed him that he was wrong, and that's why it comes right afterwards. But if the Girsa is Rava, so it's a machlokas, Rava and Rava. Rava holds you shouldn't become Shikr, and Rava holds you should become Shikr. So that's the way some, some want to learn it. But the Me'iri, so, but it turns out that the Baal Hamor Bichlal says that's not the Halacha. This is Shalom the Halacha. And we'll see the Shulchan Aruch doesn't pass <coughs> like the Baal Hamor. Shulchan Aruch paskins like our Gemara. But let's take a look now at the Me'iri. The Me'iri fleshes out this idea of the Baal Hamor. And the Me'iri says, Chayv Adam Laharbos B'Simcha, this is source number five. B'yom Zeh, Uva Achila Uva Shesia, a person has to increase his joy on this day, together with food and drink, to the point where he should be lacking nothing. And that really seems to be the theme of this Sa'uda on Purim, is to say, Baruch Hashem, I have everything. That's really what the joy of the Klal Yisrael was. But we're not obligated to become shikr and to degrade ourselves in the, in the course of this joy. Because that's not the commandment, is to have a simcha of foolishness and, uh, and, and folly. But rather it's a joy of pleasure. That we're supposed to arrive at from this, the, the, in the course of Simcha, sitting at the table with our families, with a sense of Gishmak, with a sense of a Machaya. We're supposed to arrive at an Avas Hashem, the Hoda'a al Hanisim Sha'asalanu, and praise for the miracles that Hashem did for us. He says, and therefore, when the Gemara says, that a person has to inebriate himself till he knows not the difference between these two. He says, as some Gaonim have already explained, he's quoting the Balamor and Rabbi Ephraim, who, who, who Balamor quotes. He's saying, you see from this whole story uh, that Rabbi came and shechted Rabbi Zera, that nidchu kol osam hadvarim, that the whole halacha goes out the window because of that story. Well, the Indian Bior, Miha Zesha Amru Bain Arhaman He says, if, however, we want to just try and understand the simple understanding of, you have to not be able to discern the difference between Arhaman and Baruch Mordechai, who Mimash Amru Betalmud Hama Arav. The Meiri quotes a Talmud Yerushalmi that says as follows Chesarach Lomar Achram Mikra Megillah, Arhaman Baruch Mordechai Brucha Esther Arura Zeresh. We say Shoshana Yaakov says the Meiri, after we recite the Megillah. And in the Shoshanas Yaakov, we sing, Aror Haman Haman, Aror Haman Haman, right? Brucha Esther, right? All, all the other, you know, all the cast of characters we mention in the Shoshanas Yaakov. V'chein Shitzarach Lomer, Charvona Zochur Latov. V'gam, V'gam, Charvona, right? The whole song, right? So the Omar Shechayev Lihit Basem, Ad Shilo Yeda Bebeirur Mayomar. So you're supposed to become a little bit tipsy to the point when it's time to recite Shoshana Siakov, that you don't have your sitter in front of you, 
uh, you say, what's the words again to that song? And you don't remember the words that clearly. So that doesn't rise to a very great, le great level because even when I haven't had any drinks, <laughs> I have trouble remembering the words to that song, right? So, but that's what he's saying. He says, Ella shekvar nitches ledatenu kamo shubi arnu. But he says, that's if we want to just understand the Gemara. But I've already explained to you that we don't paskin like that statement anyway. So bichlal, you don't have to, this bichlal no chiyuv to in any way inebriate oneself. And the, 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 he's quoting the Rambam here. The Rambam says, all you have to do is just fall asleep. Drink enough so that you get a little, a little uh, tired and you fall asleep. Uh, this, is the, um, this is where I saw it. It's that some say that the whole story of, uh, that he shechted him, it doesn't mean he really, literally slaughtered him, but it's Miloshon Schita. That he squashed him and then he revived him. Not that he brought him back to life, but he just made, gave him a mechayim. So um, that would be one way of understanding the story in a non-dramatic, rational fashion. Um, okay? And of course, we'll go to source number six, the very famous Mahari Weil, you know that this is very often quoted because the Ramah quotes this, and I'm sure you all know this very famous Maharil. So he says, Pirish Rashi Lubisumi Komali Ishtaker. So he says, Vishalti is P Mahari Segol in Kain Sarakli Ishtaker Biyoser. So I asked my Rebbe, I said to him, uh, uh, I don't understand. How can there be an obligation to not know the difference between Arahman and Baruch Mardachai? That's a lot of wine you've got to drink. You've got to really be shikr, you've got to really be plastered in order to get to that madrega. So he says, Vehei shivalai dahachi pirusha. De Baruch Mardachai va'arahaman heim olin v'gematria b'shavet. The famous gematria answer. That the words Arahaman and Baruch Mardachai are both, I think, 512 is the gematria. If you do want to do the math, so I want to do the math, you'll do Arahaman, they both equals Baruch Mordechai in Gematria. And he says, And so you don't have to drink a lot in order to be able to not be able to do the math anymore. So that's what it means until you know not the difference between Arahaman and Baruch Mordechai, you can't calculate the Gematria anymore because you've had a couple of martinis, okay? The Omar Shekane who besefer Aguda, he says, is brought down in Sefer Aguda as well. The Omar Maharasha Kasav Ba'avi Ha'ezri Davka Mitzvah Lebesume Velo Chiyuva. And finally, the Maharil says that there's no real Chiyuv to get drunk. It's just a Mitzvah. In other words, it's not a, you're not, you're not uh, obligated in the sense of you're obligated to hear Megillah, but you are doing that which is a Mitzvah Min Amuvchar. You're doing something optimal. It's optional, right? It's not the Lashon of the Gemara. It's not the Lashon of the Gemara. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, that's a very good point. Okay, so hold on. Kolbo, also a Rishon, says, V'chai v'adam lebesumi bipuria lo sheyishtaker shahashichrus as isur gamor because in, uh, intoxication is a complete isur. Ve'ein lecha avera gedola mizu. There is no greater sin than intoxication. Because look what it causes, licentiousness, sin, sinful licentiousness, and it causes murder, cited by the Gemara, right? And other, many other Averos, but you should drink a, a little bit more than what you're normally accustomed to having at the meal, a little bit more. So that you'll be in a good spirit. Why? What's the point of being in a good spirit? Unbelievable. He says, So that you can give simcha to the poor. That you can be happy. So that you can bring happiness to other people's lives who are less fortunate than you. And give them comfort. And that's true simcha. True simcha is when you can take people that are less fortunate than you and give them joy on Purim. That's the kiyum of simcha on Purim. 
And that's the reason for drinking just a little bit more so that you, you are no longer as inhibited as you normally are. You're no longer the, the sourpuss that you normally would be at the end of a long day's work. You've had a couple to sort of just loosen you up just enough to be able to make other people happy. Okay. Next. Okay, so now we go to the Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch says, uh, so the Mechaber doesn't qualify it at all, doesn't quote the Rambam of going to sleep, doesn't quote uh, the, the Baal Hamor, who says we don't paskin like this Gemara, doesn't quote the Meiri, doesn't quote the Kolbo, who says that it's a serious Avera to become Shikr. He just quotes the language of the Gemara. The Mechaber does this sometimes if he chooses to be deliberately vague with the knowledge that there are a number of different interpretations to this line. He just says, Just quotes the Pashat language of the Gemara. Now, the Ramah then says, Drink a little bit more than you're used to drinking and then fall asleep. And that way you'll know not the difference because when you're sleeping you don't know anything. As we say with the Baleches HaMishkan, whether you do a lot, whether you do a little, your heart has to be L'Shem Shemaim. So therefore even if you say I'm going to drink a whole bottle. You have to say, Hinani Muchana Mazum and Lakaima Mitzvah. L'shem, l'shem Mitzvah's Simcha and Purim. And to do it, Shibu Chalim Libo Okay. Is it required to actually drink? Or can you take a power nap or something in the afternoon? Is that, is that, is that the same? Well, that's, that's a good question. It seems from the language of the Rambam and the Maharil that actually the 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 tranquilizer that is supposed to allow you to sleep is taking a little glass of wine because that'll bring you to the state of sleep. Now we haven't yet seen what the connection between intoxication and Purim is yet other than Simcha, but there's a mitzvah v'samachta v'chagecha on all yom, yom and tov. So we have to yet, if we find a connection specifically between intoxicants and Purim, then that might answer your question. But let's, let's what wait. we got from meat already. So we're getting simcha from meat, right? And we learned that the Rambam says you have to have meat at the Suda's Purim, that you have to have wine. That's for sure. Every Suda, every Suda's Yom Tov, you have to have wine. <coughs> but why dafka this language of Chai Vinish Lebesume? Okay. So the Mishnah Bura says that you should know not the difference between Ar Haman and Baruch Mordechai. And the, the Mishnah Bura brings from the Ateris Zahav, I believe, is, who is quoting. He says, Shezema Pala Rishona Shenital Nekama Rabba Mimenu. He says, there were two types of salvation that took place on Purim. The first stage of salvation was the downfall of Haman, where vengeance was extracted from the enemy of the Jewish people. Now, but the second stage, which is even greater than exacting vengeance from Haman, was what? Was Gedulas Mordechai. That was the elevation of Mordechai to become the, 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 the minister and really the replacement for Haman. <coughs> that Hashem blessed Mordechai to become sort of like the, the king's right hand man. Yeah. He says, <laughs> That before a person is shikr, when you're completely lucid, you're able to discern both of those as two disti dis distinct <coughs> stages of, of gifts that Hashem gave to us at that time. That you should continue in your festivities and you should reach a point where it's very difficult for you to discern the difference between which Yeshua, which salvation is greater. And, um, and of course, and of course then the, the Mishnah Bura writes, when it comes to doing mitzvahs, after you've had a glass or two, 
He says, "Ba'ayin bo'or zarua de mikol makom yir elios zahir be'inyan etilas yadayim u'birchas hamotzi u'birchas hamazon be'yisim chashal mitzvah." You have to be careful that you can still make brachos and you can still fulfill mitzvahs at the stage that you're at. So obviously, if you can no longer do mitzvahs, then you've gone too far. And the Primaganim writes, especially in light of the fact that you need to have Kavana, that all of the mitzvahs you're doing L'Shem Mitzvah, if you can't have Kavana anymore, Bichlal, so you're sort of, you've wasted, you've, you've ruined the opportunity to fulfill the mitzvahs properly. Yeah. I had a problem with work. I, uh, he was demoted a little bit, wasn't he? From the ten when he became Okay. Okay, that's true. That's wh that's what Chazal do say that he was not so much devoted, demoted, but he was Ratsui Lerovecha, that he had critics. But Chassam Sofer says that that actually is not a demotion. Chassam Sofer says that that was actually a big bracha for Mordechai, for Mordechai, because when you have critics, it keeps you on your toes. So that in itself is a that in itself is a shavach. That is in itself is a shavach to Mordechai that he was Ratsui Lerovecha. I'm a ballerina. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. And uh, and the, and then the, uh, the and the Mishnah Bura quotes the Prima Godim saying that he advoc the Prima Godim advocates uh, the practice of the Ramba, of the Maharil and the Rambam that you should sleep. The Bir Halacha quoting the Elia Rabbah says uh, on, on the words Chai Vinish Levisume he just asks Pashup Shadi says Vim Tomar Heich Yechayvu Chazal. How could Chazal tell us to do that which is mentioned in Tanakh in many places? That hashichrus l'michshol gadol, that drunkardness, intoxication is the cause of tremendous sin. As a matter of fact, there's a beautiful kliyakar who says that the word anavim, which is the uh, which is the the, the the fruit that you make wine from, anavim, grapes is related directly to the word Samael, which is the name for the, for the, for the Yetzir Hara. Because if you take the letter that comes after Samach, you get Ayin. If you take the letter that comes after Mem, you get Nun. If you take the letter that comes after Aleph, you get Bez. And you take the letter that comes after Lamed, you get Mem, Anavim. So Samael brings you to Anavim, or the tool of Samael is Anavim, and that brings you to all different kinds of michsholim. <coughs> so the question is, how could Chazal tell us to utilize intoxicants in order to serve him? The yesh lomar mipnei shekol hanisim shenavsu li Yisrael b'mei hachashverosh hayu al yedei mishte. That's the reason, says the El Yerava, because, and this is the first time we're actually in our sources, that we're seeing a, con a direct connection and a unique connection between Purim and intoxication. And it's because um, the miracles of Purim took place through partying. That was through partying that the miracles took place. That's how uh, Vashti was removed from her post, was because of a party, was because of an intoxicating party. And similarly, Haman's downfall came through Esther making a party. And so therefore, we replicate and recreate a party atmosphere it, replete with alcoholic beverages in order to remind ourselves of the nature of the miracle. And that's why Chazal told us to recreate that experience, to drink wine. And of course, El Yerab repeats what we've seen before is that this is just a mitzvah, it's not a chiv. And of course, again, the question is, as Eliot had asked, what do you do with the language of michayevinish, or chayevinish lebesumi? Chayev means you're obligated to. Okay, so we're going to get to that, and we'll see that in Orach HaShulchan in just a second. Let's go to the Shari Tshuvan, source number 11, V'yishan. <coughs> so he says that, you see that there's a certain equivocation here in the Shari Tshuva. First he quotes the Be'er Heitev, and he says that, quoting from the Siddur Amudei Shamayim, who writes that his father, Hagonzal, Hayanoig bimei bachrusa lekaim hamemer kibshuto, that when he was a young man, he fulfilled the directive of Chazal according to the Pashat Pshat, and he got plastered as a young man. So 
when you're in yeshiva, you know, that's, he did it kipshuto, right? He did it, that's when he did it the way that the Gemara says it. But if someone has a weaker constitution, like, you know, some of the AKs among us, you know, we're getting a little older, you're right, and it's not easy for us to process our alcohol. Oh, and he writes in parentheses, Oh, she mishtateh. Or, you know yourself, you're not a pleasant guy to be around when you've had a few drinks. And you do things that are dishonorable. Right? And we all know people like that. Yeah, put a few drinks in a guy, he would be the nicest person in the world, the most dignified and contained. You give him a couple of drinks and the things that come out of his mouth and are totally inappropriate. And if you know that that's your teva, right, so then eno lishtos yosir midai, that you shouldn't drink. He says, v'rai l'davar Reb Yehuda bar Eloi, the dok, and the kavanasa, the mashakos, Reb Yehuda bar Eloi, who Rashi tips, Reb Yehuda bar Eloi, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Yehuda bar Eloi, Omer b'Yushalmi, d'lo shasi elami pischa lepischa, that he used to drink, he used to get so sick from drinking alcohol, from drinking wine at the, at, for the arbakosos, that he wouldn't touch wine for the entire year from Seder to Seder, from one year to the next. Because that Mamish made him so sick. And so, so what did he make Kiddush on? He hit a chalas. And then maybe he used Chamer Medina for the Shabbos morning. He says, Mashma de Bipurim lo shasa keven shishtiyaso hayamasik libriyas kufo. So you see very clearly that if it's not good for you, and you know that it's not good for you, whether it's from a, a, a physical standpoint it's not good for you, or you're going to end up really becoming very um, undignified over the course of having a couple of drinks. So you have to know who you are. You have to know yourself. You have to know whether you can hold your liquor, and if you, if you don't hold your liquor, uh, what kind of person you become. Okay, that's number 12. Arach HaShulchan. Arach HaShulchan addresses Elliot's question of how can we say that it's optional when the Gemara says Chayiv. She so says, V'yesh lefaresh ad velo yada, kolomar, ad shelo yuchal lahachriya, and he's quoting the Atera Zav, the same one that the Mishnah Ber quoted, that you're not able to determine, Ezo tova haisa yoser gedola lefanenu, imapolas haman im gedulas Mordechai. Which one was greater? Was it the downfall of Haman or the elevation of Mordechai? He says, V'vahagos maimini v'shem rav yakos, of the zehu lemitzvah velo liiku v'ayin sham. He quotes the Hagos maimini, who says that it's not obligatory, it's only a nice thing to do. And the Orach HaShulchan says, Ve'eno muvan. So I don't understand. He says, Daha omer lashon chiyuv, michai ve'inish lebesumen. How can you tell me you're not obligated if the language of the Gemara is clearly that you're obligated? He says, Ve'yo shlomar sh'yesh lefarish dahachi pirushom. So the Orach HaShulchan comes up with a very creative re reading of the Gemara. And basically what he does is he bisects the line in the Gemara. So if you read it like this, Chai v'nish l'vesumi b'puria, put a big period over there. Ad v'lo yada b'in ar haman l'boruch mordechai is a separate halacha. And the Arach HaShulchan reads it as follows. He says, the bevadai ain kol b'nei adam shavim bazeh. I'm sorry, I skipped the line. He says, the hachi purushim, mechai v'nish l'vesumi kolomar, dezeu chiyav al kol echad ad v'lo yada. He says, that everyone is obligated to be mit basen, to become a little bit shikor, and adlo yada klomar v'harshus biyad hashoseh lishtos adlo yada. And then the part that's not obligatory is the adlo yada part. The chiyuv is to drink, and the thing that's not obligatory is the adlo yada part. It's because every person has the option to drink whatever he feels is appropriate. The bevade inkol bnei adam shavim baseh. And what the Gemara is basically saying is that even if you drink to the point of Adelo Yada, we will not rebuke you. But not that there's Mamish a Chiyav to do that. The only Chiyav is to drink a little bit. And then Adelo Yada, even if you drink to that point, you're not in violation of this halacha. We won't be Goer. We won't rebuke you for drinking so much. Because Lamaisa, it's poor. So that's how he, Elliot, that's how he gets around that. It's a little bit of a duck hook, you know? Like a feel of it, like even up to the point of that. Yeah. 
But okay. If you look at the Balam or any of the other poskim that said that you would reject it because the story rejects it, then even it, it still answers the question of Machayim. So yes, there was a halacha that it was Chayim, but then that that Chazor be Rabba mehahi. It's rejected. Chazor be Rabba. So Rabba Rabba was was Chazor, or the Gemara rejects it. Yes. Yeah. So you don't have to, you don't have that question. Correct. But the only thing is, is that the Shulchan Aruch doesn't paskin like the Balamor. Right. Yeah, I'm saying, but just right. to, to answer that question. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, clearly, like to answer David's question, if a person said, you know what, I'm going to go like the Balamor, Harishus Biado, because this is only a limitsmith to in the first place. But there is still value, of course. There is still value in having some wine, like the Mishnah Bura said, to remind us of the way that the miracle came about. So maybe just making a, a small little l'chaim on some six percent moscato <laughs> in a little shot glass, you definitely would be you still would be mechaim the, the 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 aspect that we're discussing here. It's below the threshold. It's below the threshold. It's below the threshold. All right, I have to know my audience. Yeah, yeah. How many beers then? <laughs> All right. So right. <laughs> so, 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 so David's question is, what about other spears? Does it have to dafka be wine? So this, I wanted you to take a look at this, uh, the Mishnah Halachas from Rav Menashe Klein, Zichron Levracha, so that he, he, he addresses this, I, this issue of using other intoxicants other than wine, because as we know, a lot of people will drink other things, beer, um, Canadian beer, um, the scotch, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know, choose, choo choose, choose your poison, right? So, or for that matter, if they legalize marijuana, could you smoke marijuana on Purim in order to fulfill the mitzvah? I yada. I mean, I know it's, it's, it sounds funny, but it's not a joke. I mean, if the issue is adelo yada, so then does it have to dafka be a, a, a spirit, or could it be so anything that makes you a little bit drowsy and a little bit disoriented? So he says, um, so first of all, he says, Uvdvar she'ela, so, uh, source number 13, it's in Chela Kesim and Pesim and Pegimel. Uvdvar she'ela, so, Beloshan Rashi, Megillah, Dav Zayin, Chayv Lebesumi, Biyayin. He says, Vekashalo, Vechi Hamisva, Biyayin, Davka, Viefshe, Bemashka, Acher, Halo, Iker, She'ishtakir. So his, the question, or the person who asked him the Shaila, Rav, Rav Menashe Klein asked, was asked the Shaila, why does Rashi say, if you go back to that Rashi, Rashi had said Yayin, but the Gemara didn't say Yayin. So where does Rashi know that Adafka has to be Yayin? Who cares? If the whole objective is to become um, dysfunctionally, dysfunctional intellectually, so then what difference does it make how you get to that point? Use whatever intoxicant you have available to you. The yain lavdafka, and therefore it should be lavdafka yain. The ayin rach sham shekosav besima, pira shikor. According to Rabbeinu Hananel, he doesn't say that you have to become shikor with yain. He just says become a shikor. V'ulai kol hamashkaot shahashotem mehem asur likanes lebeis hamikdash bichlau. He says, and it could be that any in spirit that would m render you incapable of doing the, the uh, temple avoida would be sufficient to allow you to fulfill this mitzvah, so scotch, beer, whatever you want. The tour also doesn't mention wine at all. He says that the um, um, that it's interesting to note that when everyone quotes the tour, they don't observe that the tour changed the language because the language of the Gemara is lebesume, not lehishtaker. And so Rav Klein says that the reason why the tour uses a different language, and he says lehishtaker, is because lehishtaker means to become intoxicated. Lav dafka with yain, whereas le'absume could specifically refer to wine. So therefore, one could argue that maybe any intoxicant is acceptable. So if you use the approach of Bira Lacha, that, that has to do with what happens in Megillah, it's called the lay of Gala uh, yain, uh, right? Uh, right, right. They don't have whiskey No, no, they had in the Gemara, they sure they had. They, they had spirits, yes they did, they had a very strong kind of uh, spirit, which, uh, which was made from dates. 
Yeah. They, they had other intoxicants. Other, they, didn't they didn't have us. Okay, whiskey maybe they didn't have, whiskey but yeah. Have yeah. Okay, but uh, but they had other intoxicants. Uh, okay, fine. So he says, Ella de Be'emes, Gam Harambam, Perak Beis, Mimagila, Halacha Tesva, Kasa Vizela Shona. But now he says, take a look at the language of the Rambam. The Rambam writes, he says, Kate said, Chova Suda Zu, Shiochal Vietakin Suda Nan, Kifi Asher Timsa Yado Visho Se Yayin, Achi Ishtakir Vier Dam Vishikhruso. So the Rambam also mentions wine specifically. Harashi is Kir Yayin Davka. So the Radbaz asks the following Shaila. He has a case as follows. Ruven took a neder that he's not going to drink wine until he gets back home. This is his way of pledging to Hashem. Hashem, if you watch over me, I'll abstain from wine. So And the Shaila that the Radbaz asks is, would a person while he's on his journey be allowed to make Kiddush on wine? Because he's not doing this for personal pleasure, he's doing this to fulfill a mitzvah. So the three examples that the Radbaz brings are making Kiddush Friday night, Arbakosos, and wine for Purim. So it seems like from the Radbaz also that it's Dafka wine, because otherwise, why should there be a dispensation? And if you're going to tell me that it doesn't have to be wine, in Kane Vadai Da Asur Biyain Purim Shrayev Shalo Bishar Mashkos. He says the if the Radbaz must hold that you have to Dafka use wine, because if not, then why would there be a heter if you took a neder not to drink wine? So okay. The Gambar Okeach Sim Rash Lamed Zain, Kosov Michaivin Shlub Subi Bapur Yapirish, Yarba Bimishte Hayayana Kamlashoda. The Rokeach says also explicitly wine, Mivuar Lichora, Mikolhani Rishonim, Diyain Dafka. It sounds like we have a big machlokas. The Torah, on the one hand, says it could be any intoxicant. Rashi and these other Rishonim seem to be saying that a dafka has to be wine. He says that the Gileon Hashas also brings this. He says since the majority of the poskim do say Yain Dafka, it would seem that it has to Dafka be Yain. So now here comes the Mishnah Halachos, and he's going to tell us not one reason, but three reasons why that on Purim it has to Dafka be Yain. He says, V'nira lomar tam l'fimasha kosov ha'el yirabe b'temi yaso, heich yichai bu chazal mashinisker b'tor v'anavim b'kama mekomos, so remember the El Yarabah that the Bir Halacha quoted asked the famous question, how could Chazal tell us to do something which is, which is directly counter, counter-indicated by everything in Tanakh, that wine is, as an intoxicant is an evil thing. He says, so he quotes the El Yarab in its entirety the same way that the Bir Halacha did, that because the miracles of Purim took place through partying with wine, that's why we replicate the experience of partying with wine. Now we can understand why specifically wine. Kevin the Hasam Hanes Haisa Yede Hayayin. Right, because then, back then, the miracle was Dafka with wine. Vanach Nusrichim La Aso Zecher Lanes, Dumi Lanes. And we have to replicate the miracle in the same way that the miracle was done back then. Bishtiyas Hayayin. He says, Vahasim Kolamishtaz Hayabiyayin. There you go, Arch. So the, in, back in those days, all drinks. <coughs> Were, were every time you had a drink at the table, it was with wine. They're, they didn't have other drinks that they drank with the meal. As it says in the Megillah, that Achashverosh uh, had a good heart in the, in the wine party. And that's why Achacham obligated us specifically with wine. Now he gives another reason. He says, O Yesh Lomar, Lefi de Mevor b'medrash shahaman hilshin l'achashverosh ala Yehudim, he says, there's a medrash that says as follows that Haman spoke Lashon Hara to Ahasuerus about the Jews. And he said, She'im ye pol zavuv b'koso, hu zorik es ha zavuv v'shosah hayayim. 
Then Yiga Hamelech because Ishbachenu. Uvaze Shamalov in Ken Al Yedei, in Ken Al Yedei Yayin Bahakol. This is another connection between wine and Purim. The Medrash says that what angered Ahasuerus against the Jews is that Haman said to him, you know, if a fly falls into a cup of wine that a Jew is drinking, he'll just scoop out the fly and he'll continue drinking. But if you, the king, touches his glass of wine, he's going to discard it. So you are more disgusting to the Jews than a fly is. And that's what angered Ahasuerus and incited him against the Jewish people. So once again, wine is directly related to the whole story of Purim. And his Ba'od Bo And now let me give you a third explanation as to the connection between wine and Purim. He says, L'fima da'am ruzal, shalu talmide rabbe rab shimon bar yochai mipnei man yishai v'sanim shal yisol shal sadar kliya. That the students of Rabbi Shimon bar yochai asked, why did the Jews of that generation deserve to be exterminated to the point where they needed a miracle to save them? He says, because the whole Sauda of Achashverosh was where the Jews benefited inappropriately from the drinking of wine at the Sud of Achashverosh. It's not just that Vashti was removed from her post as a result of wine, but the Jewish people sinned with wine when they, bet, when they partook of the, of the partying of Ahasuerus' palace. And therefore what Chazal told us to do, I believe what he's suggesting is, is that let's remember where we went off the, the, the proper path. Let's remember why we needed the miracle in the first place, and let's rectify our past sins by using wine in the proper fashion, by drinking it by drinking kosher wine, by drinking wine, l'shem mitzvah sudas purim, instead of what we did in the past, which is that we drank wine, l'shem shichrus and l'shem um, yeyush, that we gave up and we said, that's it, there's no more Judaism, no more temple, and all is lost. Mm -hmm. So he says, that's the third reason that we should drink wine, is that we should elevate the, our past misdeeds by using the same a tool that we use to express our, <laughs> our forsaking of Judaism to re-embrace it. He says, And so he says, and, uh, and that explains, that explains why you should have to use wine. So for Rabbi Nasha Klein it's chlor, for the Mishnah Bur it's chlor, for the Ra for Rashi it's chlor, for the Rambam it's chlor, that when the Gemara says, Chai Vinish Lebesume Bipuria, it means with wine. So there doesn't seem to be this Indian, um, unless you go like this one opinion of the, which maybe is mashma from the tour that way, but the, but, uh, the Mishnah Alacho says it's really, it's all the other opinions go connected that, but really the mitzvah is supposed to be with yayin. So um, I know that wine is fine, but liquor is quicker, uh, <laughs> but... Uh, <coughs> but at the same time, if you want to do it l'shem mitzvah, if you want to do it l'shem uh, l'shem mitzvah, so then it should be dafka with wine. And finally, finally, we'll take a look at Rav Sternbach, which which is what he wrote <coughs> in his Chuvas Svahan Hagos, offering a reason for why this principle of Chayiv Inish Lebesume is true. So we've seen a number of different explanations of why it's important for a person to intoxicate to lose himself. One is that he should not know the difference that Hashem is so, Hashem is so benevolent to us. Hashem has showered us with gifts that we're so overwhelmed by the kindness that we can't even tell the difference anymore between which gift is greater. It's like we're being totally showered with gifts. That's one reason of Chayv Inish Lubesume. Another, as I mentioned at the outset, is the whole idea of realizing that we weren't in control and it was really HaKadosh Baruch Hu pulling the strings from the, from the background that we had and nothing to do with it. So he says, Nira Lafaresh, Chai Vinish Lubasumi Bipuriado Loyada bin Ar Hamal Barh Mordechai. He says, Hainu. He says, Yesh to Kufas Haman. The Ur Haman. He says there are times in Jewish history which we could call the Ur Haman periods of Jewish history. Kalomar Shanu Chas the Shalom Tachas Yad Hat Sovarim Yamach Shemam. That those are times in Jewish history when we're facing very severe persecution, Rahman al Islam. The Oz, Hester, Tel Hester, Va'ur Haman, and therefore Hashem is hidden during those times, and truly cursed is Haman because he has the ascendant hand. 
the Yesh Tekufo Shal Baruch Mordechai. And there are other times in Jewish history when Mordechai is blessed. Shal Yisromim Koach HaTorah V'yad Hashem Golui V'romema. That there are times in Jewish history where the power of Torah is strong. The state of the Jewish people is strong. And the hand of God is, is revealed and, uh, and elevated. And on Purim we're told to drink to the point where we can't tell the difference between those two periods in Jewish history. Get to that point of spiritual epiphany through whatever intoxicant, through whatever it's going to take to get to the point where you say to yourself, you know what, there is no difference in the eyes of Hashem between the darkest moments of Jewish history and the brightest moments of Jewish history. He says, um, yad Hashem hateva And both of these periods of Jewish history are both equally emanating from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, doing what needs to be done. V'lochein sameach yoser meharagil. And that's why you drink a little bit more than you normally do. Uveli seichel. And so even though you don't have as much seichel, but at least this you're capable of realizing, that everything that happens in Hashem's world, whether it's good or it's bad, whether it's Ar Haman or Baruch Mordechai, it's all for the Yad Hashem. And that's really the whole purpose of Purim. And that even though Hashem's name does not appear at all in the Megillah, but nevertheless, everything is by the hand of Hashem. And that's why Purim, according to Chazal, has a, has a leg up uh, over all of the other Yom and Tovim. There's a Medrash that says that all of the other Yom and Tovim will be Batel, except for Purim. So why is that? Because Purim is the time of recognition that everything that happens in the world is through Hashem. But in the future, everyone will come to the realization that everything that happened, the darkest of hours and the brightest of hours, all was orchestrated by the Yad Hashem directly. And that's what Purim represents, a recognition and acknowledgement that even the things that happen covertly are the Yad Hashem. But truly Hashem is the, the manhig and he'll redeem us very soon. Um, in the name of in his namesake. Yeah. Why is there any different than Pesach? Because Pesach, God had to make a big intro. For him is God has God has to make a big intro. For him God has revealed himself only covertly. So the challenge of Pesach is to be able to recognize that not only is God the God of miracles, but he also he's also the God of ordinariness. <coughs> He's also the everyday God. If we only had a pay, that's what the Mephorshim speak out, why we need a Purim before Pesach. We need a Purim to acknowledge that not only is God the God of the grand spectacles, but he's also the God of the daily life, daily living. And that everything that happens is through the Yad Hashem. Any, any questions, comments? Any objections? <laughs> Just the logistics, I think we were going to talk about that, about yeah. when this happens, because of Mar, because Purim is over, by the end of the student. You know, it's funny you mention that. So first of all, the logistics, it's a good point. One of the things that we saw was from the Me'iri. He says that when you say Shoshana Siakov, you're not going to be able to remember the words of the song. How are you going to drink? How are you going to drink between the Megillah and Shoshana? That's a real quick one. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna uh, so maybe in between each parak or, or no during each haman you have a quick one right you have to make sure you know it here the right. word as well too. you have to make sure you hear the word right but your question really is we're still fasting you're still fasting right so the question <laughs> right the question that's right right the poor poor the poor day the question is how how logistically are you going to be so first of all certainly. Um, there, there are a number of different shilas that come up. For example, if you were to say, you know what, I want to bench, but I want to be mamshich my seuda, so that I, so the question is, are you really mekayim seuda spurim after you've already benched? So that's that's one shila. What if you say I want to daven myriv, 
because my Suda has gone into the night, but then I want to continue my Suda. If you've already said Myrib and you've left out Alanisim, so you've demarcated that Purim is over. That's also another problem. So I don't have a simple answer. I don't have a simple solution to the logistical challenge. Um, and all I can say is, is that may, it might even make sense to have the suit a little bit earlier and then Davin Marv a little bit later. So that uh, if you Davin Marv, let's say, two hours after you finish your Suda, then whatever intoxicant entered your system, you'll have a chance to shake it off by the time it's to, uh, to Davin Marv. I don't know. I mean, I think it depends on the situation. But I want to remind you that the purpose of this ex fall asleep. Right. The purpose of the uh, fall asleep just for a few hours. You know, after, then you wake up. The purpose of this exercise is not to promote drinking. The purpose of what we've seen tonight is to demonstrate that the majority. I, I don't think that I've given you a slanted view of the poskim. The majority of the poskim do not understand chay v'nish lebesumi adulo yada in the literal sense. The majority of the poskim understand that it means either to take a little shluf afterwards or to take a little small drink because you want to use wine and incorporate it in your mishta to connect it to the historical Purim, but not that you should get mamish plastered. Okay? Yeah, Mike. On the one hand, you've got the going, you know, drinking to the point that they're going to have a pogrom. On the other hand, you have the Jews drinking wine and they're imbibing at the Achish Beirish's feast, and uh, obviously they were intermingling. So the Hachish, you would figure that you wouldn't want any part of wine at the uh, at the at the at the at the court. No, so that's what Rab uh, Rab Menashe Klein had said. He says you dafka use wine as a way of making a tikkun of being masaking the mistake which you used before. Use it as a tool of, rec <coughs> of rectifying. That's what we have to do. That's what sometimes we have to take the chefza that we actually used for a sin and use it for something holy now. What? Can we use the gold from the eagle for the I don't believe that you know. They didn't use Moshe, dis Moshe destroyed the, the pounded it into dust. No, but we do have examples of this. We do have examples of this. I have to just think of one offhand of where we take mamish that which we did in a sinful way and we and we rectify it by doing the very same thing in Lashem so I just don't have it in my head right now. Don't you say, uh, like, like gold, Yeah, but that's only lifnai v'lifnim. But there are plenty of clay hamikdash that are made out of gold. The aron is made out of gold. The, uh, the shulchan is covered with gold. The menorah is made out of gold. So, uh, so you see that you can use gold. You just can't use it all the way in the holy of holies. But you do. You do. Um, you sometimes do use that object which you sinned with. You use it to be masak in the sin. There you go. Very good. Very good example. Hegel, yeah, Chazal, Chazal connected. All right, have a frail and everyone. Don't drink too much.